No, no, actually, yeah, the, the, the thing is, was it was short term, we did announcement at the university, exams little, then we made this Facebook, and after Facebook event, people started. So most of those interesting people came, and 80% of them came via Facebook, and not the university formal announcement. Second challenge was even among them, we did a lot of selection, we had to, to disqualify people. Uh, so the participation was low in, in, in compared to what we planned, but it was good in terms of quality of people who were selected. But it's a lesson learned for us. Next time we will do different ways. We also know we'll do different way. Maybe also go use more heavily the, the, the role of the dean of the faculty. Maybe to strongly encourage people to participate, etc. Yes, please. Yeah, how many uh, facilitators you you got? Okay. What the thing is, uh, three facilitators. Uh, who were at the same time participants. I used my three assistants, including them in three groups. They were participants and facilitators. We had two days, prep. They, they helped in designing the program, so they got the content. Then we did one day, really, we went through the program. It was a quick learning process. And they were the facilitator and, and uh, participant at the same time. And I was the main instructor. So there's one instructor with three assistant participators who themselves were also Students. Yeah, that was my you know next question. You know how did you <coughs> train the facilitators? So we actually did yeah. very very quick, quick uh -huh. uh, into, uh, into but they they helped in developing all the materials yeah. who already mm -hmm. knew even the printing and design etc. Then we did one day. They participated in the selection process. Actually, that was a good lesson for them. They saw they were there when they saw the interviews and how, what we would accept, what we would not accept. Please. Uh, I'm just my question about uh, academic. You mentioned that you you, uh, you yourself, for example, you are teaching the university, you are using academic. Don't you think that would so? How can you how can your university or college would adopt that with some different system of teaching within the? That would be that the normal would that university adapts. The problem is there's an established way of doing. Yeah. And I come in, and also don't forget, I'm a practitioner that went into academia. I'm not a classical academician. In the three years I'm in the academic world. So I came from practical side into. So I'm trying to shake it a little bit to change. And it's not easy. It's a whole mentality that needs to change. Hopefully, for us, our dean of the faculty is very much supportive. And I think we need to attract them. I think one of the things was. Uh, the good thing was we had a certificate, and then those who didn't get it actually, wow, we missed something. Even uh, yes. well, what I mean is that uh, a staff member, mm. a staff member alone, how can he apply a system which is not already endorsed or accepted within the, the college? Yeah, that's what I'm. What yes. I, what I so mean. that means that means right from the beginning, you need to. I think you need to to convince them that's the that's the system of teaching. Then. If they apply it to whole, uh, the whole college or whole faculty, faculties, that would be the beneficial should cover all the students. Yes, that only should be well, only well, one subject or something like that. Just to respond, we had recently a department uh, as committee discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, findings was that our students have poor research skills. It was general discussion, and we discussed to introduce a course on research techniques, etc., to strengthen it, to reintroduce and strengthen it, to double, etc. And I have heavily also lobbied for that. And I talk about the seminar. If they are very good techniques, etc., etc. So hopefully for next year we will grow greater in world. And it is there that some of the teaching staff told we also would like to go through these nice. techniques because they they uh, they agree. But in general, you, you need to you need to it, it take will take time before it changes. Yeah, of course. It's great that a social scientist gets involved in talking about scientific issues because I think that social scientists need to do this. Um, so that message got over. Um, the, the role play, you said one group was outstanding and another group didn't want to. What was it about the group that was outstanding? Um, was it the, the people who were involved, um, the, their sort of background? Had they done this before? Why were they outstanding? I think they were outstanding. They were many personalities. They were very it's a lively persons. Mm -hmm. Secondly, they get this actually Iraqi girl, she made this, I uh, think it should be here. Uh, well, yeah, she is, she is speaking there. She did, was actually, her, she studied in the UK, 
and her case was, in, that happened in the UK actually, plagiarism. Her, her piece of her work was copied by someone else uh -huh. two years later, and she discovered it. Actually, others discovered she came, she called, etc. So things happened. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not sure. I think it was in Iraq. It was a bachelor degree that it happened. Then she studied in UK. So that happened in Iraq. So, so they, they did it very lively, but really played it like a theater and with a lot of emotions, etc. They had good case because she actually, she had that pain, she lived it. So. And when she was told, she was happy to tell her story. Uh, the other group uh, just didn't have time or maybe not, they were a little bit shy to, to make a role play. Uh, and one of them was, one of the groups was not really interested by, they were a little bit reluctant. The other group was interested by, and they, they didn't have time, and they were happy that they didn't have time. They were not, they were willing to do, but not very much. And they, this group took actually all the, and they showed that they did it a real play. Right. Do you think it would help if the facilitators did something? Because sometimes, you know, as the teacher, you show you that you can be embarrassed, and you can put yourself in this sort of position. So it kind of lowers the threshold of anxiety. Yes. Maybe it could be, if we do, do next, for example, do a longer seminar, maybe in the first or second day to show ourselves something, to encourage them to do us a role play or something. That could be encouraging for them. Because it was easy for them to play. To do theater is not easy uh, for people. So there should be some techniques, to get some ice-breaking techniques in the beginning. Let's speak. Do you have any sense about what kind of content you could use that is specifically political science? Because mm -hmm. I, I appreciate everything that is good about using content that is not familiar to them. But there is also a positive thing to say if we're talking about something you know and the field that you will be working on when you leave this university, what are some of some cases or some materials that you can use? Are there things that you can work with them on? We already, we used the material, we, we, we adapted it a little bit to our field using examples. Then we also work on real cases that happen. I think from our point of view, uh, dual use was not really, uh, yes, that's why we dropped it a little bit, uh -huh. but not immediately uh -huh. applicable uh, for us. But all the issues of authorship and plagiarism and fabrication are really very relevant, very much relevant. Even me, I don't even know more relevant for our field than you because in, 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 in your field of sciences, you at least you know, this, everything is measured as numbers. Like in, in social science, ideas. It's much easier to copy or to, to claim that this is my order. So this, the, the issue of uh, plagiarism authorship is a, is a serious issue in our field. So that was very good for people to learn about those issues. And those, those, let's say those concepts of how to. Now we need to work it further because that was first step. We we'll work it further to develop more the curriculum, more adaptive to. Uh, active learning was the most interesting thing. The active learning techniques was also the most interesting thing. Okay. Yes. I think all of us feel Even in a very high level university where students pay a lot of money to go to school, they will choose to do less work. And I don't know if that's just human nature or if that's just being 19. Um, it's internal dynamics. <laughs> yes, it's physics. I'm sorry. Um, it's chemistry also, yeah. I mean, a body at rest is going to do as little as it can get away with. But it is. Um, it's a challenge that only by infecting people with the enthusiasm of active learning and seeing how much fun it can be do we get people to move move their colleagues to do it too. It, your, your experience doesn't surprise me. My best students have been the ones who come from nowhere. Nobody I expected to come into a class because they want to learn and they want to be teachers and they want to do something active. I think we need to work with the with the with the, with the people with the young with the 
conscious and say, okay, you can, you, you can get away with little work, with lower standards. But that, a longer term, that will not help you in your life. That's the message I have tried. For example, there were some students who were doing poorly, and they just wanted to get, uh, they, were, they were doing poorly, and they wanted just to get through the exam. And it was a bit embarrassing to it. I said, okay, I, I will let you go. I will not leave you in the class. I'll give you one. <coughs> You will, uh, you will succeed in this exam, it will fail in my eyes, remember. In my eyes you will fail, but on paper you will, you will get. All along your life you will remember that, and you will regret that. Because we may meet again and again, I will know you, that you are a failure although you were graduated. So that's how to make effort for yourself, this is not for exam, this is for your future. If you do it good, then you will raise your own level, that's how your, your destiny then will be. So that's I'm trying to uh, to convey that message that you are actually raising your own quality if you're doing good. It's not just for exam or getting a paper, getting a diploma, etc. That's how people will measure you also in the future. Will you try and keep in touch with your students to track them in some way? Yes, uh, actually, in, in uh, beyond that, I do a lot of mixture of teaching and coaching, coaching because I do also I give seminars on youth development outside my work, additional activity. So I give a lot of lessons. For example, they, they contact me for their uh, professional career, for, for the studies they want to do. So I try to keep contact with them. Uh, <coughs> these students might be exemplars for others. So to talk about what they learned and, and how that has helped them later on. So if you're, when you're trying to sell it, yes, you know, they, they could be your evidence. Certainly, certainly. We have some students who are actually now. Work. Some of my students they work with me now right. because they were good, and I say give them examples. So this, and they are involved in very interesting things. They say they were students, they were good. That's why they are. Yeah. Uh, they were selected. Or people people notice good students, mm -hmm. and I said, and I always give all teachers like good students. All of them. Right? So if you are good, you will be liked and you will be supported. And you will be given opportunities. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.